These are all our different organizations that make up Providence St. Joseph. Last year, Providence and St. Joseph's California merged together, became one. And with that said, they have a new mission statement and new core values, and we're going to cover those today. But with that, I want to show you a video just to get her started. <coughs> we'll play. is incredible. It's a great opportunity for us around that notion of what the collective sisters would have done. There's been an embarrassment about mental health. People are afraid to say that there's illness in their family and hopefully we'll eliminate stigma. We will elevate the care and use best practices, research, information. You can't just heal the physical person, you have to heal the mind and spirit. Hopefully we can rally other people in this nation around understanding how important this is to really having healthy communities and healthy people. With the talent we have, with the size we have, with the legacy that we have, we can use that courage to go forward and transform. Not only transforming health for the West Coast, but transforming and being a leader of healthcare for the entire nation. We bring compassion to a world that really needs it. Healthcare can bring compassion. You couple that with innovation, that leads to hope. My hope would be that if we look out at Providence St. Joseph Health 50 years from now, that the heart and soul that the sisters have given to us is still present and that all of the caregivers understand where they came from, understand their heritage, and are as committed to the mission and values as our wonderful caregivers are today. said, um, like I said before, Providence St. Joseph's uh, combined all these organizations. They came together uh, last year uh, across all areas to formulate what we call our new mission and our new core values and our um, promise statement and our vision. And with that said, they came up with a new prayer. And um, so I want to read that for you as, hold on, okay. Can you guys hear me well? So, uh, like I said, this is the what they call the mission prayer or living our mission. You have called us, O oh God. You have invited us to be part of your work of healing and making whole our world. You have called us, compassionate one, and shown us in your Son, the vulnerable one, the poor ones, the suffering ones, the grieving and lost ones, whom you love, for whom we are to care. Be with us, the living, the proclaiming, the making visible and tangible, the mission you have given us, make us wise, heal us in our suffering, show us how you care, <clears throat> excuse me, how to care, how to heal, how to love, as you do, as you will, make us worthy of this sacred work, make us a sign of your goodness, keep us steadfast, keep us humble, keep us together, amen. So that was our uh, reflection. As expressions of God's healing love, witnessed through the ministry of Jesus, we are steadfast in serving all, especially those who are poor and vulnerable.
I see the mission as the core or the heart of our organization. And the core values are the moral bones. The mission statement to me is a reflection of the revolutionary Jesus who brought the greatest love to those who are underserved. We are not just called to be a great healthcare organization, we're called to be more than that. We're called to be God's presence in the world. Compassion. We reach out to those in need and offer comfort as Jesus did. We nurture the spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being of one another and those we serve. Through our healing presence, we accompany those who suffer. We are strong, we are smart, we are innovative, but we're also compassionate and we show love. I think about a quote from Father Madai. He said, I love love and I let love love through me. We, of course, focus on metrics and data and outcomes, but we never lose sight of the individual being touched. Dignity. We value, encourage, and celebrate the gifts in one another. We respect the inherent dignity and worth of every individual. We recognize each interaction as a sacred encounter. Every single person in our communities and beyond is worthy of our love, of our compassionate care, and our respect. If you ask someone how they are, actually listen to the answer. It's being authentic and being present, regardless of who you're talking to. Justice. We foster a culture that promotes unity and reconciliation. We strive to care wisely for our people, our resources, and our earth. We stand in solidarity with the most vulnerable, working to remove the causes of oppression and promoting justice for all. The value of justice really challenges the organization to think about how do we stand, not just alongside, but in solidarity with those who are suffering. Justice to me is the foundation. It's when we stand up, regardless of what others say or do, to do what's right for people, all people, and especially the poor and vulnerable. Excellence. We set the highest standards for ourselves and our ministries. Through transformation and innovation, we strive to improve the health and quality of life in our communities. We commit to compassionate, safe, and reliable practices for the care of all. When we talk about serving the mission, we do that every time we look beyond how we usually do things and look for the innovation to still deliver. We don't take the easiest answer and look for the right answer. That's excellent. Integrity. We hold ourselves accountable to do the right thing for the right reasons. We speak the truth with courage and respect. We pursue authenticity with humility and simplicity. Integrity means that you always are approaching things with a moral viewpoint. And in our case, a moral viewpoint that is adjusted for the benefit of the many and not the few. It reminds us that there is always room for truth, particularly if it's delivered with kindness and respect. As expressions of God's healing love, witnessed through the ministry of Jesus, we are steadfast in serving all, especially those who are poor and vulnerable. It means honoring our legacy, it means being bold, and it means love. Because if we are going to change the world, it's going to take all three things. I couldn't do that better than those videos, that's for sure. But we're going to give it a try. We're going to go through the uh, mission statement today and cover the core values and do some time of a moment of reflecting on uh, what the core values mean to us as an organization, to us as individuals. So I passed out some uh, mission cards and you're welcome to keep the cards. If you don't want to keep them, just leave them on the desk and I'll have somebody, maybe Jeffrey, collect them for another presentation. Um, so this is our mission uh, and so what's happened here is um, Many people from across ministries came together to develop the new mission, values, vision, and promise. And um, we felt that 
Not only words, but colors and art will help convey the meaning of the mission and the core values, but also to evoke feeling about the commitment to our community and our care providers and our patients. So these colors here, uh, you'll see this around the hospital a lot, and so we're just going to talk about what that means and what it means to the mission. Um, and so in this first piece, we incorporate the daisy, which is uh, historically represents innocence, and the fern, which represents sincerity and um, humility as it um, hides among the many colors, and the bright colors draw our eyes and <coughs> ask us to uh, feel joy in the boldness of our faith in our work. So, and I'm sorry if this sounds a little preachy, but, uh, <laughs> but you, know, you know, the mission is, you know, we're a faith-based organization, and it's kind of hard not to sound this way uh, when presenting this material, so just bear with me, okay? Um, so, in this, in this first slide here, we have a, uh, you know, our vision statement. Now, I, I did one of these little fancy things, let's see if it comes in. There it is. So, uh, with that said, um, our vision is, is health for a better world. And so as, as an organization as a whole, we've all adopted this idea that, that we come together not just for our patients that we care for, but we're going to care for our communities also. And so Providence is very committed to uh, connecting with the community. I think uh, we have a new, the surgery home program, if you guys are familiar with that, where we, where we, uh, we track the patient from, the, from before they get admitted, while they're in the hospital, and when they go home. And so, not just are we just focused on the patient's care, or the care that we provide, but we're focusing on the patient as, as they are in the community also. And so our promise is, uh, know me, care for me, and ease my way. So a lot of these we've heard before, especially the ease my way, that's been around a long time, and so they, the organization has incorporated you know, many aspects of St. Joseph, many aspects of Providence, brought them together and created, created these statements for us, okay? Any questions about our vision or our promise? Don't worry guys, you're going to get a chance to interact. Okay, so the mission statement is an expression of God's healing love witnessed through the ministry of Jesus as we steadfast in serving all, especially those who are poor and are vulnerable. So you heard that in the, in the video. And that is our new mission statement. And um, there's a lot of things in the mission statement that uh, we can, you know, talk about. Uh, especially, let's see here. Where's my notes? Um, so all the different little statements in the mission statement, uh, they where they reference God, both God and Jesus in the mission, and a statement for two reasons. We are saying that. Fundamentally, we exist to express God's healing love. People of all faiths and those who are not part of faith tradition can connect with the purpose greater than our, themselves to express healing love in their speech and actions. So as a ministry, we are always committed to embracing and celebrating the diversity that we are. So I did pass out the mission cards around. Um, so I want to, you know, volunteers to read each of our core values. So, our core values are um, compassion, dignity, justice, excellence, and integrity. So, uh, we, we've changed some core values, and we've added some core values. And so, this is what we decided to adopt. And our first core value is, of course, compassion. So, get a volunteer, maybe Travis, to read compassion for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's right up here. Okay. We reach out to those in need and offer comfort as Jesus did. We nurture the spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being of one another and those we serve. Through our healing presence, we accompany those who suffer. Thank you. So yeah, so if you think about that, uh, we're invited to reflect on the words and give shape to our future and consider how you would call to this ministry and how you would uh, bring your gifts and humanity to uh, wherever you serve. So I'm reading off these notes, and it's my first time giving this presentation to uh, in a very condensed form. Um, so in this in this slide, you can see that we've added uh, some color, uh, some representation to help you reflect on on that core value. Uh, in this case, uh, um, 
did talk about it here. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Hey, can I get a volunteer to read Dignity for us? All people have been created in the image of God. We value, encourage, and celebrate the gifts in one another. We respect the inherent dignity and worth of every individual. We recognize each interaction as a sacred encounter. Thank you, Emily. Um, so it, it just, if we think about dignity, it's our heritage and our tradition that assert that every person has an inherent worth uh, simply because they are human. Every person is created in the image and likeness of God. Uh, respecting the inherent worth of each person helps us to be able to celebrate the gifts of diversity. We approach how we treat every person we meet and care for with the same sense of dignity. Um, the value of dignity is reminiscent of the uh, previous core value of respect, and the yellow, blue, and greens represent an intellect, uh, understanding, and harmony. So that's what that's all about. Okay, justice. Can I get a volunteer to read justice for us? Act with justice, love, and kindness, and walk humbly with your God. We foster a culture that promotes unity and reconciliation. We strive to care wisely for our people, our resources, and our earth. We stand in solidarity with the most vulnerable, working to remove the causes of oppression and promoting justice for all. Thank you, yes. So, with, with justice, um, is to ensure that we are uh, going to be fair, that the way we are going about things is going to be just and fair. Um, these uh, blues and greens uh, represent trust, stability, and endurance, characteristics that we must have when we pursue justice. Um, the flowering strawberry historically represents the uh, righteousness and good works. So that's the <coughs> imagery that we're trying to present there with the core value of justice. Anybody have any questions or want to reflect on justice? Anything I have to say? So as manager in this organization, my commitment is to be a just manager, to treat my employees uh, as fair as I possibly can, and to, you know, kind of approach uh, every conversation in a just way. And so what we ask our care providers to do is to think about how we treat each other also, and, and are, we, are we acting in a just way? Are we being fair? Are we giving people an opportunity to uh, have their, their opinion or their side of the story? Because we always say there's always two sides of the story and we have to listen to both sides. And that, that is treating people just and fair. <coughs> excellence. Anybody want to read excellence for me? Come on, guys. Anna? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we set the highest standards for ourselves and our ministries through transformation and innovation. We strive to improve the health and quality of life in our community. We commit to compassionate, safe, and reliable practices for the care of all. Thank you, Anna. So, in this core value uh, of excellence, it's important to note that the, the essence of stewardship uh, still remains in the value of, of justice and excellence. So. We uh, care wisely for our people, our resources, and our earth, and we work to create more just, loving, and peaceful world for all people. Although new values have been added, it doesn't mean that we stop focusing on the ideals of the past values. So I just wanted to add that point is, you know, we embrace the, the core values of the past, uh, but now we have the core values of today, and we have incorporated those core values together to create our new core values of excellence. Integrity. Looking for volunteers. Thank you, Monica. Um, let us love not merely with words or speech, but with actions and truth. John 3.18. We hold ourselves accountable to do the right thing for the right reasons. We speak truthfully and courageously with generosity and respect. We pursue authenticity and humility and simplicity. Thank you. So yes, with integrity uh, is a new value across the organization. This was expressed by many caregivers during many focus groups in the discussion held across the organization. We want to hold ourselves to the highest standard in ethical behavior. Adding this value highlights our desire to hold ourselves accountable to do the right thing for the right reasons. Anybody want to reflect on, on this core value and what it means to you? 
because I can do it. Um, morning group. Got it. So, uh, integrity. I mean, think about it. You know, we, we all want to be treated with integrity. We want to be recognized for our value, what we bring to the table. And you know in your heart why you're here. You want to do good work. Uh, you want to do a solid day's work. Uh, and so that's, to me, what integrity means, especially as a manager, walking through the door every day, putting in your 10 hours and going home. Um, did I, did I put forth the, the best effort I could? Uh, am I able to sleep at night knowing that I made the right decisions? Did I treat people fairly? Um, did I have integrity when I delivered you know, my, my leadership? And then likewise, within your own services, same, same thing. I know most of you guys in this room, and I know everybody comes to work with integrity. We wouldn't be doing this work unless we had integrity, but think about how you want to be treated and how you treat each other. And that's kind of the goal, the core values. Um, so with this, I think is one of the most important ones that we added. So what, what is the goal moving forward? Um, so I'm just going to read these. Uh, to have every caregiver here to be inspired and enroll in their own sense of what it means to live the mission and how to, their work supports the mission. So just like what I just said is, the mission helps keep us focused, our core values help keep us on track, and our promise is what we're saying to ourselves and to our patients, right? And to, to reflect often and deeply on the words, the hope is that all of us find something in these words that inspire us to be our best selves and to do the work that we call to do. So, you know, we know what we do. We come to work every day. We want to do a good job. We want to go home the right thing. And, and we want to show up the next day refreshed and energized. And so what we're asking you to do with the core values and the mission is kind of just, just think about it from time to time. We're going to be posting things up on the wall. We want you to stop and read them every once in a while to just kind of just embrace them, internalize them, and then kind of live them, actually. So. So to take the time to reflect on our new statements, know the words, use them as a source of reflection and conversation. So that was the end of my presentation. Did I, I did it in 20 minutes. So forgive me, I'm a little nervous because I try to condense a one hour presentation into 20 minutes and if I went through that a little too quickly, I, I apologize. But my goal here today was to present the information to you and to have a common message to all different departments and surgical services. Does anybody want to have any questions or comments about the mission, the core values? Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, Tony wanted me to talk briefly about cell phone use in the OR. And we all carry cell phones. I mean, it's becoming quite convenient <coughs> for myself to get a hold of surgeons and get messages from leadership. But please be mindful that this is just a tool for communication. It's not something to be fun with and take pictures, do videos, things like that. It has happened in this so far, and the consequences can be devastating because it's a and it's a breach of patient um, patient privacy when you take a picture of anything in the OR anything behind that red line if you're taking a picture that involves anybody it could be a staff member or it could be somebody in the background patient whatever that's a, that's a HIPAA violation and um, we will address it uh, according to the HR and they're pretty strict about HIPAA violations and cell phone use. So be mindful when you've got this cell phone in your hand. Don't be taking pictures. It's good for communication, things of that nature, and use it respectively. <coughs> hopefully we won't have any more issues with cell phones. the microphone. Um, so I was on vacation in July, and Vanessa's going to get the July one together. But we didn't present the June one at the last staff meetings, so this is it. Um, for the June standard of the month for counted cases, opened instrument pans in room should be counted. Unused items that are not on the field should be closed off in pans. So rather than just putting the tray 
in the case cart and having it open, if we've counted instruments, they should be closed off. So then if there's a missed instrument count, it doesn't get mixed up that something dropped off the floor and then we're counting a piece that's sitting there in the, in the case cart open and there's confusion. Um, place items dropped off the field on a blue chuck on the top wire shelf of instrument cart. I've seen some interesting other options like people just take the blue wrap and use that or, and it's just a good practice just so that everything's located at the end of the case so we don't end up with lost instruments even if we're not counting instruments. Um, the next thing, um, we had emailed the specimen policy and we discussed a designated place to put specimens and po the possibility of not taking them with a patient to pack you. Um, Kim, who was at the meeting, um, discussed um, that specimens need to be handled from start to finish to make sure they get to pathology. And then we also discussed using staff to bring the specimen to pathology before the case ends, even if it's not a frozen and keeping it in a designated place, perhaps near or with the counted dropped instruments. And of course, verifying what we're sending pathology with a surgeon before it's sent off, so then we would know that we have everything that we needed to send off. Um, there had been a trial PIXIS set up in OR202. Um, it was just brought up that stocking was still an issue. I'm not sure if that's been um, you know, what was addressed at the last meeting, so I'll go on to the next one. Um, pick lists, um, we have been getting two sets of pick lists, so there's supposed to be one in the blue and one in the red bin. I know yesterday I ended up with one pick list for one case, so I'm not sure. It's hard, they don't want us putting the label in the bin, so I think that's something we probably need to talk about at the next meeting, if there isn't two pick lists. Um, but we do need to have the items put in the correct bins so that one's put away upstairs and one's put away downstairs and they don't end up sending a bin downstairs that has items that are supposed to be put in the pixis upstairs because then it just kind of ends up in a wire rack by the elevator just kind of all bulked together. Or um, And then the other issue that's actually more important is Nurses are responsible for putting away the implants that were removed from the PIXIS for their own cases but not used, and that's because those are usually way more expensive than the um, regular PIXIS items, so that's why that's becoming a nurse responsibility. I just, um, Travis, do you want to scroll down on my thing over there? QR codes, are, that's good, thank you. Um, QR codes for gynecology and urology procedures, this has been kind of ongoing. I'm, I might just drop it off of the thing if nobody volunteers, because unless somebody wants to be voluntold, I'm not gonna make anybody do it. That was just something that had been requested, and Kim said there has to be knowledgeable staff to contribute to the videos, so I don't know if anybody wants to step up to that, or we're just gonna let it go if nobody wants to make a video. Um, TV precautions. Um, there's a new capper that's going to be coming instead of the papper. Um, and Kim talked about that at the June meeting. It's a bike helmet battery powered shroud like the Stryker ortho hoods. And it's 99.97% effective. And you're supposed to be able to hear conversation. It will be in the OR, and Kim will work on stocking, location, and education. Um, there was a um, pre-op and OR meeting to talk about um, the transfer of care and um, <coughs> voiding for patients prior to pre-op. And there's another one, July 19th. Um, and has that been started as of July 2nd? Are we calling the CNAs now at pre-op with um, requesting them to void? I'm, I'm not sure, it was just mentioned that they were gonna be starting that on July 2nd, but when I was here yesterday, um, pre-op didn't have enough staff and we were taking the patients to the bathroom ourselves. So I'm not sure how we're doing with staffing to have that taken care of, but if you end up with a delay because you took the patient to the bathroom, you should definitely chart that because maybe that would help um, facilitate getting more CNAs to help take the patient to void versus having 
expensive OR minutes getting charged um, because we're taking the patient to the bathroom ourselves. Um, no sharps in black bins, only blue bins. That was mentioned as an issue. And then um, the pre-printed labels actually are in um, an area supposed to be signed off right now. They're not ordered yet. That was the last I heard on that. So, um, but it's supposed to be a pre-printed medication labels that um, will be universally picked for all the cases. And then we're supposed to give feedback if we don't need it picked if you end up in your bin and you're like well i only putting saline on the field i don't need to open up this pack then that should be then taken off of the pick list so that's all i have thank you the hover jack air patient lift is used in the event of a patient fall to gently lift the patient in a supine position from the ground back up to bed or stretcher height this segment will train on the proper use of the hover jack in conjunction with the hover mat air transfer system. The hover jack air patient lift system includes the hover jack patient lift and the hover tech air supply. The same air supply used for the hover mat transfer mattress. The hover jack air patient lift has four inflation chambers. Each one has a black, one-way valve through which the air supply inflates the chamber. The valves are labeled and numbered from 1 to 4, with the chamber labeled Valve 1 being the closest to the floor. Each chamber also has a red cap valve to be used for quick deflation. Always recap these valves after using the hover jack to ensure that they are closed for the next use. It is not necessary to cap the black valves unless the patient will remain on the inflated hover jack for an extended period of time. The hover jack has six perimeter handles, two at the foot end, two at the head end, and two on each side. There are two patient safety straps, and a pull strap is located at the head end. The hover jack has a Teflon coated bottom allowing caregivers to easily transport the patient across the floor. The hover jack has a weight capacity of 1,200 pounds and is latex free. To clean the hover jack, wipe it down after each use with the same cleaners or solutions your facility uses to clean stretcher pads and mattresses. It is important to note that the hover jack cannot be machine laundered. To ensure that your hover jack is easily accessible, HoverTech offers a wheeled storage and transport cart, which can also hold the air supply and hover mat. There are two methods that can be used to position a patient on the hover jack. With either method, at least two caregivers must be present to perform a patient lift. One option is to log roll the patient onto the hover jack. To do so, place the hover jack as close to the patient's body as possible. Log roll the patient onto the deflated hover jack, making certain that the patient's body is centered on the device. If a hover mat is available, place it on top of the hover jack so both can be positioned under the patient simultaneously. The hover mat will be used to perform the lateral transfer onto a bed or stretcher. If the patient has fallen in a hard to reach place, such as the bathroom, the hover mat may be used to extract the patient from the space and to move him or her onto the deflated hover jack. Secure as much of the hover mat under the patient as possible with a log rolling technique. Inflate the hover mat and move the patient from the fall site onto the deflated hover jack. Glide the inflated hover mat at an angle over the long edge of the deflated hover jack. Make sure that the patient's body is centered and that his or her head is below the head end seam of the hover jack. Deflate the hover mat and disconnect the air supply hose. Once the patient is positioned on the deflated hover jack using either of the described methods, begin the inflation process. One caregiver should be positioned near the patient's head to reassure the patient and monitor the lift. 
while the other caregiver remains at the foot end to inflate the hover jack. The hover mat and hover jack patient safety straps should be attached loosely around the patient as the safety straps will become tighter when the topmost chamber is filled. Check that the red cap valves are fully closed. The inflation valve should not be capped. Check that the black Teflon coated bottom side of the hover jack is against the floor. Explain the inflation process to the patient. Begin inflating the hover jack by placing the air supply hose over the inflation valve located on the air chamber against the floor, labeled valve one. Press the hover jack button on the air supply to initiate airflow and begin inflation. To ensure that each hover jack air chamber is fully inflated, remember to look, listen, and feel. Look, watch the chamber inflate. The patient's body will stop rising when the chamber is fully inflated. Listen, the sound of the air will change to a higher pitch once the chamber is fully inflated. Feel, the chamber should feel rock hard to the touch. When you have determined that the first chamber is fully inflated, move the air hose to the valve in the second chamber, labeled valve two, and repeat the look, listen, and feel technique until fully inflated. Continue the same process for air chamber valves, labeled three and four. It is important that each chamber is inflated in sequence for safety, starting with the chamber valve one, which is closest to the floor. If chambers are inflated out of order, the hover jack can become unstable. Once all chambers are fully inflated, press the standby button on the air supply to turn off the airflow. Bring a bed or stretcher alongside the inflated hover jack or use the perimeter handles to slide the hover jack next to the bed or stretcher onto which the patient will be laterally transferred. Adjust the bed height prior to the patient transfer so that it is slightly lower than the top of the inflated hover jack. Detach the hover jack safety straps and insert the air supply hose into the hover mat hose entry closest to the receiving surface. The caregiver at the head end will move to the side of the hover jack, assume the position of safety, advise the patient of inflation, and ask the caregiver at the foot end to inflate the hover mat. Select the appropriate air supply inflation button for the hover mat model in use. The caregiver at the patient's side will keep his or her body firmly against the inflated hover jack during the lateral patient transfer to avoid any hover jack movement. The same caregiver will then initiate the patient transfer by gently pushing the inflated hover mat at an angle toward the receiving caregiver who has moved into position on the opposite side of the bed or stretcher. The receiving caregiver grasps the hover mat handles as they approach to pull the patient fully onto the receiving surface. Ensure that the patient is centered on the bed or stretcher prior to deflating the hover mat. Assume the position of safety, advise the patient of the deflation, and press the standby button on the air supply to turn off airflow. Raise the side rails when deflation is completed. Additionally, it is important to note that the hover jack air patient lift and hover mat transfer mattress can be used while performing CPR and with patients on a spinal board. Check with your state guidelines for appropriate spinal board use. Please refer to the hover jack or hover mat manual for more information. So as a review, we did have a fall in the OR like several weeks ago. Actually, we had two um, where we, two within a month where we actually needed to use the, uh, the hover jack. Um, and so we'll just, as, as the video, go ahead and let's proceed with doing the, the log roll and sliding the hover jack in conjunction with the hover mat, as the video is described. <laughs> Thank you. 
Remember the red caps, always close. Oh, 
When I was first a CNA on 10 South, they identified that this is how we were going to evacuate patients from the 10th floor all the way down. Right <laughs> Okay, quiet down real quick, folks. There's some uh, shortage of Betadine products, specifically it seems like the Betadine swabs. You may see some things missing at times in some of the bully kits. Um, so just be aware that there is a Betadine swab shortage. Um, so. I don't know, you might want to uh, have some backup beta dye paint in your rooms as a backup. I think that's it. Other than, uh, you know, we talked about cardiac services, looking for people interested in scrubbing cardiac surgery. If you're interested, please talk to Alex. We are short Cortex today. Uh, I have a couple SSAs helping. Uh, coordinate with your charge nurse, not coordinating with the uh, SPD department to get uh, reruns done. So anyway, just uh, keep in communication with uh, with your charge nurse and your supervisors. Does that mean it's okay for nurses to call directly down to SPD, or they still want us to call? Uh, go ahead and go ahead and call uh, directly down to SPD. Okay. And then uh, your your people that are attending in this day are Garfield and Gunn. So okay. if you want to call those different instruments and things like that. So we're off. Yeah, um, There are six robots today, so if you're in a robot room, that first case, run that scope. Let's get that scope turned over. So call your SSA or your core tech and have them label that appropriately and send it down to get it rerun. <laughs> yeah. uh, and just let me know too, so I can expedite that. I only have to go and animate one, it's going to be a delay. Staffing does look good. I do have some extra people too. So, uh, yeah, give me a call and I'll see if I can try to find you. Uh, 